me, me and Naomi became good with each other and, and looking after Adam properly. And he was calmer. And he started doing well at school. And we had a lot of support from our Kingdom Hall. And good friends there. You know, the sort of people who never let you down. We're happy. We've lived in the truth. And now... Mr. Henry, your son has leukaemia and you and Naomi are facing the ultimate test of faith. Is that how you'd put it? Well, that's, that's exactly what it is. Can you tell the court why you and your wife and Adam are refusing a blood transfusion? What, what you have to understand is that, that blood is the essence of what it means to be human. It's, it's, the, it's the gift of life that we should all be grateful for. Just as life is, is sacred, so is blood. So why would Adam refuse such a gift from the doctors? Mixing your own blood with the blood of an animal or another person is, is, is pollution. It's contamination. Uh, it, it's a rejection of, of God's gift. That, that's why he specifically forbids it in Genesis and Leviticus and uh, Acts. And our son, Adam, he knows that God's word has to be obeyed. Do you and your wife love your son, Mr. Henry? Yes, we love him. And if refusing a blood transfusion should cause his death... Then he'd take his place in the kingdom of heaven on earth as to come. And how will you and Naomi feel? You'll be grief-stricken, won't you, Mr. Henry? So this refusal is Adam's decision, not coming from you. Thank you, sir. He's a very, he's a very special person. He's profound. We couldn't change his mind even if we wanted to. I mean, no one could. Mr. Henry, these books of the Bible you mentioned, at the time of these Iron Age texts, transfusion didn't exist. How on earth could it be forbidden? It existed in the mind of God. Many Jehovah's... Witnesses accept blood products without compromising their faith. Isn't it the case that there are other options open to young Adam and you could, if you wanted, play your part in persuading him to take them and save his life? I don't know anyone who departs from the teachings of the governing body. The elders give us good guidance. Are these same strict elders who've been visiting your son every day to make sure he doesn't change his mind? These are kind and decent men. The other churches have priests in the hospital too. It's true, isn't it? That if Adam agreed to a transfusion, he'd be what you call disfellowshipped, cast out of the community. Disassociated, actually, but it's not going to happen because he isn't going to change his mind. He's
your care and it's your mind I want to change. He's scared of being shunned, isn't that the term you use? The only world he knows would turn its back on him for preferring life to a terrible death. Does that sound like a free choice? If you spent five minutes, just five minutes with him, then you'd understand he's a very, very special person who knows his own mind. Mr. Henry, have you told Adam that if he saved his own life and agreed to a transfusion, you'd still love him? We told him we love him. Is that all? It's enough. When were the Jehovah's Witnesses commanded to refuse blood transfusions? It's in Genesis. It dates from the creation. Well, it dates from 1945, doesn't it? A committee in Brooklyn has decided your son's fate. There are deep truths that weren't previously understood the same is just as true in science not much room for dissent in your church is there you've probably no idea what it means to submit to a higher authority we do so of our own free will when you were adam's age you wouldn't have known your own mind would you He's lived his whole life in the truth. I didn't have that privilege. You say life is precious. Other people's lives or just your own? All life is a gift of the Lord and his to take away. Easy to say, Mr. Henry, when it's not your life. Harder to say when it's your own son. Is masturbation a sin, Mr. Henry? Yes. And abortion, homosexuality? Yes. Is this what Adam's been taught to believe? That is what he knows to be true. Thank you, Mr. Henry. <laughs>